Greetings, learners, and welcome back. We are now going to be looking at climate and weather again and looking at pressure centers in the southern hemisphere. I want to have a particular focus on atmospheric pressure centers that are in the atmosphere, particularly in the southern hemisphere. But we are going to widen our scope and look at the other hemisphere as well, as well so that we are familiar with them as well. Let us now go to our first slide. Here we see two pressure centers. The one on the left is the high pressure, and the one on the right is the low pressure. Now, a high pressure is often referred to as an anticyclone in the southern hemisphere, and a low pressure is often referred to as a cyclonic circulation in the southern hemisphere. Let me start with the low pressure. Remember, there's a relationship between pressure and temperature, and that relationship is negative. The higher the temperature, the lower the pressure. So low pressure centers are associated with higher temperatures. So there will be surface convergence, okay? There'll be surface convergence. Once that air converges on the surface, there'll be an upward spiral. Now you can see clearly the clockwise circulation. Look at that. Look at that, okay? The clockwise circulation. That spirals upwards, okay? If you are a neat student, you can widen that spiral and make you bigger as it goes up so that it is shaped more like a funnel, okay? So there's surface convergence, upward spiral, and upper atmospheric divergence along or in a low pressure in the southern hemisphere. Now, this upward spiral means your air is ascending or it is rising. Whichever word you use, we are comfortable in the exam. These are important basics, because most of your climate and weather metric will refer to pressure centers. So if you don't master this as a basic, then you are going to have challenges. Now let us look at your high pressure centers. I have already indicated that your high pressure centers are anticyclone. So these are anti clockwise circulations, okay? Remember the relationship between pressure and temperature? It's a negative relationship. So the lower your temperature, the higher the pressure. So where do you start here? You actually start in the upper atmosphere where there is convergence. Now look at the circulation, anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise. Again, if you're a wiser student, you open up so that as it reaches the earth's surface, it is bigger and your final shape is actually inverted. Again, there was convergence in the upper atmosphere, but now we are talking divergence on the surface. The air is descending. Now, another word you can use is subsiding. This is the proper geography term subsiding, but we do accept descending, okay? Now let's look at the next one. This is called reversal in circulation, okay? Let us look at the southern hemisphere, as we have done. Look at the high pressure. There's your anticlockwise circulation. And then on the surface, there's divergence, okay? There's divergence. So this dimension only shows you the anticlockwise and the divergence. And the low pressure, the clockwise circulation, and the surface convergence, okay? And the surface convergence. However, in the northern hemisphere, there is reversal. I want you to note that there is reversal. Yes, there is on a high pressure, the divergence on the surface. But note, note the difference. There now, the high pressure has got a clockwise circulation in the northern hemisphere. But the low pressure has got an anti-clockwise circulation in the northern hemisphere. We call this one the reversal, reversal 
in circulation. In sec Just make sure you write it in full. Because you sometimes get letters that write reversal in sec. And they finish with a C. We are not happy with that in the exams. And we will give you a zero for that. Try to exert yourself. Do your best. Because you, after 12 good years of studying, you can't cut corners. You've got to do it the best way you can. Now, please master this one because it speaks to a lot of things, especially when you now look at your mid latitude cyclones in the northern hemisphere. They'll be based on these different circulations that we are doing here. Okay? Now, let us look at this one. I want to look at circulations, the pressures in relation to atmospheric stability. Okay? Let us look at the cyclonic circulations, meaning the low pressures. Okay? Cyclonic meaning clockwise now. Remember I said surface convergence, and then I said rising, and then in a low pressure center, there'll be atmospheric instability. How do you see atmospheric instability? Look at the cloud cover. Look at the cloud cover. We have even gone further and made it big so that you can see it. And obviously, that will lead to precipitation and other issues like thunderstorms and lightning because here the atmosphere is unstable. So in your summer synoptic weather chart, where you have got your cloud cover that is dominantly overcast, you will notice that there is a low pressure and the atmosphere is very, very unstable, okay? Look at your anti-cyclonic circulation, which is, in fact, your high-pressure centers. I said there is upper atmospheric convergence, and then remember the word? Subsiding the air descends. Now, this air cannot condense because, remember, if you say the higher you go, the colder it becomes. The lower you go, the warmer it becomes. So any moisture that was in the air will dry up and there'll be no condensation. Hence you have clear skies. So in your winter map, where the Kalahari high pressure is dominant, you'll also find that your skies are very clear, almost zero over eight or zero over four octaves of cloud cover. So we often say, in your anticyclones, you've got a very stable atmosphere. However, in your cyclonic circulations, it is unstable. I wanted to establish the relationship between cyclones and atmospheric instability. Anticyclones and atmospheric stability relate your cyclone to your low pressure and your anticyclone to your high pressure, okay? Now, we are going to look at this map. A few things to master. Number one, isopause, okay? These are isopause. These are isopause, okay? They are lines on a synoptic weather map joining places with the same atmospheric pressure. That was supposed to be cleared in grade 11, okay? But we are now doing it so that we give you a better grasp better traction for your grade 12 syllabus, okay? Please make sure you master that definition. We look at the next one, isobaric reading, okay? That is an isobaric reading, 1008 hectopascals. Please make sure you write the units, 1008 hectopascals, 1012 hectopascals. You can substitute that with millibars. That is an isobaric reading. Again, remember, these indicate whether the pressure as you move to the center is decreasing or increasing, okay? I'll deal with that a bit later. Isoparic interval, the degree to which atmospheric pressure changes from one line to the next. Let's see. Here you've got 1012, okay? And you have the next line, which is 1008 hectopascals. What is the difference between the two? it is four hectopascals, meaning the isobaric interval in our map is four hectopascals, small letter H, capital letter P, small letter A. 
That is the isobaric interval. You need to determine that and indicate it and have the units as well. Okay? How to determine pressure? Okay? As you approach the center isobar, what is the trend? The trend can only be answered in two ways. Either it increases or it decreases. Let's look at this one. 1002 hectopascals. When you go to 1008, there is a decrease. Okay? So meaning that is a low pressure. The pressure decreases as you go to the center. Let's take another example. Okay? 100, sorry, 1012 hectopascals. 1016 hectopascals, meaning from one isobar to the next, there is an increase. And there is an increase, again, meaning that is a high pressure. As you move to the center, the pressure increases. Same as you see here. Now you know how to see a high pressure and differentiate it from a low pressure. Look at that. Towards a low pressure, 1008, 1004, 1000 hectopascals. So you can determine that, okay? Now, remember, around the low pressure, the circulation is clockwise in the southern hemisphere. Always mention that, because if you don't mention it, we will give you a zero, because the hemisphere is also important, as you saw when we are doing reversal in circulation, okay? The high pressure has got an anti-clockwise circulation. Let's go back to our map. Look at that. Low pressure, clockwise circulation. High pressure, anti-clockwise circulation. That you need to make sure you understand very, very well, okay? Now, let us look at the question paper. That was November 2022, most recent. And we'll take one or two, maybe all, okay? Now look at this reading. The atmospheric pressure reading at A is dash, dash, dash hectopascals. We've got ellipses there, okay? There is A, which happens to be a low pressure. So remember the pressure gradient. It's the difference in pressure as measured from an area of a high pressure to an area of a low pressure. So you measure in that direction, okay? So you've got 1020 hectopascals already mentioned. You've got 1016 hectopascals. There it is, already mentioned. This one is not labeled, but you can take it from there because this is 1012 hectopascals. Those are isobaric readings. What is your isobaric interval, okay? From 1020 to 1016, it is four hectopascals. So you can determine now that from 1012 to that one, it will be four hectopascals less. So your answer here is actually C, 1008 hectopascals. What I'm arming you with is for you to be able to identify an isobar, be able to have an isobaric reading, and be able to determine the isobaric interval, because you are going to be better able to interpret your synoptic weather map. Remember, from 2020, 2021, your question one will be grounded on your synoptic weather chart and how to interpret it. Let us take the next one, okay? I will skip 101115 and look at 116, which again poses another challenge because it is a combination question. And again, the new format of examining you, which is going to start from 2000, and take another few years is there must be combination questions. And combination questions are high order questions. You need to pass them to be able to get a level seven. Let us read. The low pressure cell over the interior, that is the low pressure cell over the interior, okay? Has caused northwesterly winds, okay? Those are northwesterly winds, means Winds coming from the northwest to the southeast. From the northwest to the southeast. Those are northwesterly winds. Because of what? Remember, low pressure, clockwise circulation. So there's the clockwise circulation leading to winds from the northwest. So yes, 
Number one is correct there. Now let's tackle the next part, okay? Because of what? Now we're looking at the what that I said, okay? It is the clockwise circulation and overcast conditions due to what? Due to ascending air, meaning rising air. Remember, surface convergence, low pressure, and then condensation leading to cloud cover, and then precipitation, meaning atmospheric instability, okay? So that is due to ascending air. That is not the complete answer. You still need to go to A, B, C, and D and choose an answer with one and four. Then you are able to complete the answer, meaning your answer will be C. One and four is C. Now, what you can take home from this is that when you are answering a combination question, take one part at a time and master it. Then you can put the combination together when you are done with each part. Then off you go, you get the right answer, okay? Thank you very much, dear learners. I hope you have gained a little bit on the pressure centers and the circulation and the convergence and the divergence and the spiral and all the details that I wanted. And you were able to apply that to a synoptic weather chart and you can even take it to your question paper and pass your exam. I want you to study hard. The warmer your blankets, the colder the future. Good luck, pass your exams. Thank you very much.